And what would a Microsoft operating system be without good office integration? Uh, Windows Phone 7 certainly lives up to that expectation. Starts off on the OneNote screen. These are just quick notes. This is a pre-installed note that uh, Microsoft put on just to show you some of the abilities of the device. I've created my own notes as well. You can see you have highlighted text, photos and everything. And the cool thing is you can actually, all of these notes sync to um, Microsoft's live website so you can edit them in a web-based client. It's a lot easier to do. Uh, right now there's no copy and paste, for example, on uh, Windows Phone 7. Uh, they've shown it the functionality in uh, some test builds, but it's not here yet for the production devices. And there's also no way to select a bunch of text. So while you can format something, like maybe make it yellow background like you just saw, uh, you'd have to do it in individual words, which really doesn't make any sense right now. Document support. Uh, great Excel, Word, and um, PowerPoint support. This is a really nice Excel spreadsheet. It's got you know, charts, everything in it. Works really well. Another thing I want to show you is cursor control. Um, you can see you can tap somewhere and select a word, but if you long press, notice the cursor pop up there, at which point I can easily place it anywhere I need to. For example, if I wanted to get rid of that uppercase M and turn it to a lowercase M. I'm going to say no to the save, but I do want to show you one last thing. You go into the tap on this more button here. You notice um, the labels show up for the buttons, a couple of extra commands. But I want to show you the outline pulls up from based on you know formatting and stuff like that, so you can quickly jump to various parts of the document. Kind of cool. All modern smartphone platforms need to have games, of course. Uh, this is Xbox Live games, so you have your Xbox Live avatar. I'll be able to edit it soon. I'm shooting this before the system's actually live, though, so I can't do it. Uh, you can see one of the achievements I have. Requests to play games. Some of the games in my collection. Just try out Frogger. I haven't used it yet. So... Pretty easy. We'll move on to text messaging. See a new text message just arrived. Tap there and I can get into the conversation view. Now everything's in the same highlight color as the rest of the system, both inbound messages and messages you sent. Uh, they are left justified and right justified to set it off though, but I think uh, I could do better with different colors. Messages on the left are inbound messages from other people, and the replies you send are on the right. Again, you see uh, we have the normal virtual keyboard here. Also works in landscape mode. And send it off. We're back in the inbox for messaging, and you can tell that this message is unread because it's highlighted in red text and supposed to gray. I'm going to tap on it so you can see some of the things you can do from within a method message. Uh, not just a messaging application, but just about anywhere, email, things like that. You tap on an address and it will automatically bring up Bing Maps. Phone number, so you can either call it or text it. And of course, a regular web URL will pull up the browser. That functionality also works in email, and uh, speaking of which, I'm going to show you the email client. This is a Gmail account. Bunch of new messages here. You see there's no threaded Gmail messaging. Show you the document support. Have attachments, of course, and you know I've already showed you the documents, but you can just easily launch them right from an email message.
landscape support. I believe there's also uh, formatting in one of these messages. There you go. You can also see that it has full HTML support. Underlines, green text, uh, bold, all that kind of stuff. One of the things, and you'll see this in the browser as well, when it zooms text, it doesn't reflow it. So while you can zoom in closer, you can't actually read it all, all the time. And before I delete, though, I'm going to show you a much cooler way of doing that. If you tap on the left-hand edge of the subject, it automatically pulls up checkboxes and marks messages. Now notice that when I tap on the left to right edge, you know, when I tap on the left edge here, it actually pushes in a bit, rotates the text. If you can see, it's kind of subtle, but it's a really cool visual effect. In any case, I can select multiple messages here and then quickly delete them without any kind of confirmation. It's good folder support. Uh, works, works well with uh, Exchange as well. And you can actually have Exchange folders synchronized, so it'll show you real-time when you look up here whether or not you have new messages in them. We're going to take a look at the calendar application. You can see right here at the bottom of the lock screen, it just says there's a conference call tomorrow. always shows you your next meeting down there. Here you can see sales meeting, conference room, and it's tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'll tap on that, and that'll bring up the day view here. And you can see we have multicolor calendars. Uh, this one, depending on the color, says where it's from. If I go into settings, you can see that the Outlook, my Exchange account, are in orange, and Google Calendar appointments are in blue. Teal is for Windows Live. I don't have any appointments set up in that right now. If I swipe over, I can get to the agenda view. Again, color coded. And you'll notice up here at the top it says Monday, October 18th. As I scroll down through the agenda, it changes to keep up with whatever day is currently being shown in the agenda. It's pretty cool. Tap here for the month view. You can swipe up and down. And if I pull in tightly, you can see that the text is actually in there describing all the appointments. So if I tap on the 18th, it takes us right back to where we were. I can get to a different day just by tapping on it. Here's the web browser. We're showing the mobile version of mobileburn.com. Back button is used to go back to the previous screen prior screen I had the full version of Mobile Burn loaded just so you can see what it looks like. You can see even though it's not done loading yet, it's still fully interactive, which is kind of cool. Multi-touch zooming does a fine job of rendering. Everything looks really good. Also works in landscape mode. One thing you'll notice though is it doesn't reflow text when you zoom in tightly. So, like the Android and iPhone browsers do. Uh, Microsoft has said it's trying to preserve the layout and sometimes trying to preserve the layout means that certain things get made larger when they shouldn't be, certain things smaller when they sh shouldn't be. doesn't always work out but in general the browser seems to work quite well and it's very fast. Go back to the menu here and I'll do find on page. So you can see I can search on say Apple and keep searching for Apple, all the different mentions, kind of cool. And unfortunately there is no Silverlight or Adobe Flash support built into this. Uh, I really expected more from the browser in terms of that kind of support. Uh, I assume that that has to be forthcoming. Uh, one last feature here, you can pin to the start page like you can with many things in Windows Phone 7 and you'll notice there it is. No universal search on the device so I can't search for contacts and email messages all from this Bing screen here. Uh, if you're wondering, these little things are just bits of information that Bing likes to show you. Not useful. It'd be more useful if the cursor actually showed up here by default. You can search on anything. I'll search on pizza. It's a good example. And uh, Bing recognizes what you're searching for and tries to bring up the appropriate view. So local results are probably the most common request for pizza. 
So you can see we've got that advertisement here for Italian Delight. It says A there, and then you've got the results 1, 2, 3, 4 here along with the map. If I tap on here, if I really wanted news about pizza, um, you can see that here, and just generic web results right there. You can also do voice-based searches. Uh, Microsoft's implementation of voice search doesn't work as well as Google's. Dairy Queen. There we go. That should pull up local results. You see it flip over to local there. We get the map. Bring up Bing Maps here and I'll show all the Dairy Queens in the area. You can get directions, phone number. You can even pin it to the home screen, which is kind of cool. So say we were interested in going to Munich. Let's see what the weather's like there. Do Munich weather, and instead of just getting generic search results, you're actually going to get properly formatted data. Now that we know that the weather in Germany is acceptable right now, let's see how the flights are running. Flight 706, I think, is one of the Munich flights. And you'll get real flight information right up top. As we start to wrap up, I'm just going to show you some of the applications I've installed. You know, we've got, there's a Twitter client. There's an official Twitter clients in the works. I can't show you that though. Slacker radio, a calculator, some photo sharing, uh, a number of different RSS readers. This is Samsung's uh, Now application. Gives you access to uh, weather information, news, stocks, and things like that. Marketplace has a fair number of applications, and some of them are pretty good, but the, the lack of multitasking support um, for applications is uh, a bit of a downer on this. Uh, so you, you're not going to get everything that you would expect. It's kind of like a you know, first generation or second generation iOS for uh, Apple's iPhone. There's just no, until, you, until they got to iOS 4, there just was no multitasking or task switcher or anything like that, and there is no task switcher here. You're always going back to the start menu. At least you do have the back button, though. In terms of uh, synchronization on the device, you use the Zune player and you can sync everything from um, music, uh, videos, photos, all that kind of stuff. You can sync it with your computer. And the music application also has a nice uh, Wi-Fi sync. You can sync your music as soon as you plug it into your charger. After it's been idle for a couple minutes, it'll sync over Wi-Fi to your home computer, uh, as long as you're on the same network as your home computer, which that's pretty handy so you don't have to use the USB functionality. The UI, I think, is very, very beautiful. There are a couple of features that are non-obvious, but uh, you know, touch features in general that the iPhone used um, weren't always real obvious at the beginning either. We all learn, and as the you know the consumers learn from things like you know Android, WebOS, and iOS, start to realize that you know the different things you can do here, and it'll become much more normal. It's not as powerful as say Android in terms of you configuring everything the way you want, but it's a little more user friendly, I think, to uh, first time smartphone buyers. And I think that's going to appeal to it. even the, the linear aspect of going, you know, from here back to the start menu, for start screen for everything. I think that'll appeal more to um, first time smartphone users, which is probably a good market to go after right now. So that's our first look at Windows Phone 7 from Microsoft. Uh, this is Michael Oral for MobileBurn.com.